Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. In this video, we are going to talk about the top 5 tips that every beginner as an Android really want to listen. These tips will help you quite a lot if you are struggling in learning Android or you are in the midway of learning the Android. Now, if you are getting started with the Android, this is the must video that everybody should watch. Now, just to give you the context, uh, with my Android course so far, in the last just 4 months, almost more than 100 students have reached the Google Play Store. This is really an amazing number and I am proud on that. But still, there is like small amount of number of students who are still struggling in learning Android and are not able to make it to reach to the Google Play Store. This is really a concerning situation because I want everyone to get a success and want to just taste how it looks like when you reach to the actual Play Store. So these tips are going to be super helpful for you whether at what point you are struggling you should not skip this video. So this video is also going to solve your problem about the things that you are facing about like installation of Android Studio or some other things as well. So let's talk about it but before that we have to roll that intro so roll that intro now. So hey Android developers, let's start with a tip number one. Get a stable internet connection. Now really, 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 you want to do this. You want to get a stable internet connection in order to learn Android. Now I'm not saying it this because you might want to explore a lot of things on your own or maybe you want to hang around at Stack Overflow to explore a lot of problems that you are facing. This is regarding the installation of the stuff. Now when you install Android Studio, this is very important that you should have a stable internet connection. And by the term stable internet connection, I don't mean to say that you should be able to watch YouTube videos constantly. This is not at all a test for constant internet connection. And usually I have seen that the mobile connection that you are using, the mobile network is not at all stable. And at the end of the installation of Android Studio, you face the problems like Gradle Sync issue, the connection was reset. This means that your internet was not good enough to provide a constant stable internet connection while installing the Android Studio and thus you have faced the problem. So do not install Android Studio while you are on to some mobile network. I'm not saying this is true for every kind of country and every possible student because a lot of students are lucky and able to install Android Studio on mobile network as well. But this is not the always case. Usually in 90% of the situation, Android Studio want to, want to have a Gradle sync and that sync is only possible when you have stable internet connection. So this stable internet connection will solve a lot of your problem. So go ahead, get yourself like a broadband or go to some cyber cafe or to some university so that for few hours till the Android Studio is being installed properly and a simple hello world application of Android is being run, you have a decent and good stable amount of internet connection. This is super important and the most asked question on the entire internet on the Android. I have got a Gradle sync failed issue. It says connection was reset. What should I do now? Get yourself a stable internet connection. And just back again, yes, I, I said that just a few seconds ago, but yes, again, this needs a reminder that if you are able to watch a YouTube videos constantly, doesn't mean you have a stable internet connection from your mobile phone. Simply because when you watch a YouTube videos, it's not being buffered like instantaneously. It stores a buffer on your computer and that allows you to watch the video even if there is a jagged internet connection. So this doesn't mean you have a stable internet connection. I don't know why this happens, Android Studio should pack up everything and should be delivering that. But again, the Gradle doesn't work like that. In order to have a stable Gradle and no problem with the Gradle sync issues, you should have internet connection, stable one. Again, onto a side note here again, uh, side side ties, a lot of side notes I always give. But onto a side note, whenever there is going to be an upgrade in the Gradle, it just updates all the freaking time like 2.1 to 2.3, 3.1 to 3.2. It just does it all the time like that. And if you have that update, again, you will need a stable internet connection. So make sure you watch out for that. The second most common problem that everybody faces and this needs to be addressed, get yourself latest as well as original tools. This is by far the most important thing that I can say to you. Get yourself original as well as latest things. Now, I have seen that people download the Android Studio like 
uh, one month ago and want to install that. This is not going to work because Android Studio updates quite frequently and especially the Gradle updates quite frequently. So you might want to get yourself the latest build of Java, latest build of Android Studio as well. This is super important. On top of that, what's important is your operating system as well. Whether you're using a Mac, make sure it's updated to the latest uh, High Sierra. As of time of recording, I'm doing that. It's High Sierra. But whatever the time you might be watching this video, make sure it is latest. It doesn't say any updates available on a Mac. Coming on to the Windows part, here where the students actually face most of the issues because Windows just roll out updates insanely and crazily without any given notice and they come almost every single week. So yes, make sure that you have fully properly updated. Again, a separate issue. I'm not saying you are doing it. A lot of students do that. Okay. Again, I'm not saying you are doing it. A lot of students use pirated windows. This is not at all good for Android application development because these pirated windows are usually not updated properly and are no good for the latest release of Android Studio. What the Android Studio guys does, they try to make sure that whatever the latest operating system of Windows or Mac or Linux is, they try to make it compatible with that operating system. And if you're using a pirated system, that means it's outdated. Some people I have seen are using Windows 7, that to even pirated version, and are still crying, hey, my Android Studio is not working well. It will not. It was not meant to be working good. So make sure you get yourself proper and original tools. I can also understand that a lot of people cannot afford to buy original windows. If you are not able to buy that, go ahead, get yourself Ubuntu or maybe Fedora. These are free operating system. And if you cannot afford something, that means probably you are not in a strong need of that. So get rid of that and install an Ubuntu. Android Studio works like flawless on Ubuntu as well. Uh, just recently, like two or three days ago, a student has completed a course on Learn Code Online. He was using totally on Ubuntu and has pushed like insane amount of apps, eight apps within just two months on Google Play Store. I really do appreciate him. Moving on to our third tip, which is too much of Java will not take you anywhere. Now, yes, I am aware, totally aware of the situation that Android is totally designed and just works on Java. Yes, there is Kotlin as well. There is React Native as well. But let's talk about the majority of people and what they understand and what they see. They, they always try to learn Java like an insane amount of Java. Let me be honest with you. Too much of the Java is not going to make you an Android developer. Yes, although we do all understand that Android, all of the code is mostly written in Java and Java is used in designing of all those apps. But still, I have seen a lot of people just learning Java and Java and Java. If you are going to be staying with Java forever, you are not going to be learning Android. If you are comfortable with like loops, functions, classes, objects and a couple of stuff like that, you are completely ready to move into Android. Working with Android and working with Java are completely two different things. Although they are interchangeably used, but they are completely different things. There are a lot of things, a lot of ways that you do in the Android are like Android-ish thing and you learn them in the Android itself. You don't learn them in Java, especially the GPS thing and uh, like card things. These are all being done in Android itself. They have no relation with Java. So don't just hang around too much with Java if you want to become Android developer. Yes, by the way, Java is awesome. You can always stuck around for it like forever. But if your goal is want to becoming an Android developer, make sure you switch from Java to Android as quickly as possible. Yes, many of your solution, in fact, all of your solution will be there available in Java and you'll be implementing them in Android. Yet, I am fully confident that if you understand loop, function, classes, you'll be able to understand that code and do all of your Android-ish thing in Android. So again, don't just stuck too much for Java. You are completely ready. Get that confidence and take my words, you are ready to move into Android. Get yourself a favor and move into Android right now. Tip number four, version one is bad. In fact, if you have been watching videos on this channel, these are like the entire building block of this channel and everything what I do. Version one is going to be bad, but it is the most important thing. Now, as soon as you learn Android, your first goal should be reaching to the Google Play Store. Your app might be a little bit crappy, literally crappy. It can be a simple calculator, maybe just a button on which you tap and it changes the background. But reaching it onto an actual device as well as onto the Google Play Store really gives you a lot of confidence. And again, your friends or your families might be saying that, hey, this is a crappy app. I don't like it, but this is super important for you. 
If you want to learn or work on anything, any particular app, you have to spend a lot of time on it. It's not like that within two days or a month, you're going to be extreme in that. You have to spend a lot of time with that app, work on it to enhance its feature, to enhance its like compatibility, its working, its speed and everything. But again, the most important part is version one. If there is not going to be version one, what you will be working on. So make sure you have a version one to work on with. Now, usually what the beginners does, and there is nothing wrong in that, they try to learn and explore a variety of options that they can found in Android. Now, sticking with just one app, calling it as version one and doing everything in that app is not as fruitful for the beginners, especially the beginners. Although I really advise you to go ahead and explore and create a variety of apps. Some apps might be using camera, audio, some of them might be using GPS or maybe Firebase or something like that. So make sure you explore a variety of options as a beginner. Once you have understood all the aspect of majority of features like shake feature or maybe animation or maybe Firebase, then you can move on and design your very first mega scale app if you really want to wish to do so. Number five is getting out of spoon feeding. This is the most important and actually this is the eventual part where you get out of your comfort zone. Now you might be learning Android from an online course, from a book or from any offline store. Now whenever the instructor is going to teach you something, he's going to give you all the assignments and everything. You do those assignments, you follow the instructor and that's awesome, that's amazing. But whatever the app the instructor is teaching you, whether that's me or any other instructor, it's not going to be flawless. There will be flaws in the app of that instructor because that app was made for teaching purposes. These are not the apps like Learn Code Online that needs to be go in the production in the hands of hundreds and thousands of people. So these apps will be flawed a little bit. Your job is to learn how you can make those apps better. In fact, your job is to craft and design up and create your own idea and make that app as flawless as possible. Nobody can teach you this thing in any course, any book or maybe any offline boot camps as well. This is the thing that you have to come up by yourself and this is known as getting rid of spoon feeding. Yes, instructor is doing best and teaching you everything, but he cannot teach you everything. No book, no course, or no bootcamp can does. And in fact, this is the truth. The app that you really want to wish, this is your creativity in your amazing head. So make sure you understand this. There is no book, there is no stack overflow that can actually give you exact code that you're looking up to implement. You have to pick up pieces from Stack Overflow, from experience, from instructor and have to assemble them on your own to make your dream app. This is super important. When you will be working for the Android app, maybe you are an entrepreneur and want to design your own idea. Maybe you want to work for a company or maybe you want to work as a freelancer. Whatever that case is, there will be time when you will be completely on to your own. There will be not much help on the Stack Overflow. There will be not much help on any instructor or any book. This is not, I'm, I'm not saying this to just scare you out. I'm saying you that as early and as quickly you get the habit of solving on your own problem, this is really good thing that you can do. This doesn't mean I'm saying you, you cannot post your questions in my courses or any other instructor courses, wherever you are learning that goes for everywhere. Just try to explore once onto your own. Asking for help is always good. And this is the reason why Stack Overflow is just humongous and everybody's asking help for there. But yes, again, do understand that the exact thing that you really want to do is not available anywhere on any course. So make sure you get out of the habit of spoon feeding and try to do a little bit onto your own. So these are the five tips that I wanted to give you to make sure that you become better Android developer. I want to say best of luck and I really wish that as quickly as possible your app reaches to the Google Play Store. That would be an amazing moment for you as well as for me as well. That's it for this video. Do share this video and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't yet and I'll surely catch you up in the next video.